Hey, what's up, you guys? If you're going to be towing a trailer with your Toyota RAV4, you're going to need to get trailer wiring installed on the vehicle. Let's go ahead and break it down so we can get you outdoors. You will need the tool seen here to complete this installation. All right, so right out of the box, we have a power converter, two tail light connectors, and it looks like a four flat trailer connector. The green and red wire with the connectors is going to the passenger side. The yellow and brown with the connectors is gonna to go to the driver's side behind the tail light. We also have wire to run to the battery of the vehicle up to the front. And we have our battery connections here. Um, all right, let's go ahead and prep the vehicle. So to access our connectors, we'll have to take the paneling and pull it away from the body on both sides. To do that, um, we're gonna have a Phillips screwdriver to remove here, a Phillips screw to remove here, um, a 10 millimeter bolt to remove here, and a 14 millimeter bolt behind the cargo loop here. So I'll go ahead and start removing the flooring and then we'll, we'll, we'll take those bolts and screws out. We also have some cargo doors here that we're gonna remove. Same thing on both sides. Okay, we'll go ahead and start with the Phillips screws. Then we'll go ahead and go with the 14 millimeter bolt hidden behind this cap here. I'm gonna go ahead and just squeeze it and pull it out. Just like that, it exposes the bolt there. I'll switch over to the 10 millimeter, get the center fastener. There's a little tray here you can remove if you want. I'll just set that up here. Now to get, we, we've got this prepped up now to pull out, but the only thing that's stopping us is this center panel right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off as well. And there, there are no fasteners that need to be pulled out or unscrewed. So basically there's just gonna be clips down the center here. Um, we'll take our trim tool, just pry up, and it'll unfasten from their clips there. Okay, now that we got it unclipped, we should just be able to lift straight up, come right out. I'll set that aside here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take a trim tool panel remover and start prying away on the paneling here. Again, there's gonna be just body plugs up and down here that we're gonna find and pull out away from and it'll clip, unclip. There's one, three and four there. Okay, as we're prying apart, I've got all the body plugs and I just realized that I missed one attachment point here and it's a cargo anchor. It's got a 10 millimeter screw holding it in, or bolt. So we'll just take our impact tool and unscrew it there. There it is, we'll set it aside. Now the body should just come right out. Okay, I'm just gonna pry away a little bit and I'm gonna show you all of our connectors here. Looks like there's quite a few, so we wanna find the one that's going into the taillight harness and matches our tow connector harness. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna take the tow harness connector, mating in and plug it in. Just like that have the other end that's going to go into the vehicle. Okay, and it clips right in. Now we'll go ahead and route our wire over to the driver's side. 
I'll do the exact same thing on the driver's side. We're at the driver's side now. We're just going to do the exact same thing that we just did at the passenger side. Last connector goes in behind the tail light. Okay, now we'll go ahead and make our ground connection. We need to find a spot on the body here or even down here on the, on the threshold panel here. Okay, so I didn't find a suitable area that I liked for grounding in, in this area here. So I rerouted our ground wire back down to the center threshold here. And we're gonna go ahead and go right to this body part here, right to the nice clean metal. Nothing on the other side that we're gonna damage. Um, I'm taking our provided tech screw using a electric nut driver, quarter inch nut driver, and we'll just ground it right there. Okay, next thing to do is run our power wire from inside the vehicle to outside the vehicle. Um, we're looking for a flood plug. Okay, we got two fasteners holding this carpet here, so I'll take our trim tool, just pull apart on them. It'll come right out of the body, just like that. Okay, there's a little flood plug here that we can pull out. That goes right down to the bottom of the vehicle, um, to the ground there. What I'll do is I'll put, drill a little quarter inch hole through the flood plug, push my wire through it. Okay, here's our wiring harness. Again, I'm just gonna take maybe about 10 inches or 12 inches and go underneath, push it up through the hole of the flood plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our flood plug back into place. Just push this right down in. Okay, I'm just gonna take it and put it under here. End up in this cargo area. And these two wires will go ahead and connect with butt connectors. So we'll need to strip this end of the wire off so we can expose the copper on it. Take the provided butt connector, crimp it using a pair of crimper strippers, just like that. Go ahead and slide that through, push it in. Go ahead and make our crimp. Pull on a little bit, make sure it's nice and snug. Okay, and that's our connections in here. Now our next step is going to put the paneling all back together. I can start by just lining up our fasteners body plugs through their holes in the body and then tap. That goes right back into place. Okay, now we'll take our screws. Our cargo anchors. Take our socket. Switch over to our 14 millimeter socket. Of 
Okay, and that's it for the inside of the vehicle. We'll go ahead and take our wire and run it up to the battery and make the attachment points there. Okay, so before we start running our wiring, we want to get into the engine compartment and identify where the battery is on the driver's side or passenger side. We can see that it is on the driver's side here. Um, this is our positive. This is where we'll be attaching to. Um, we also want to try and find an area where we can run our wires up through. We can see that our brake reservoir is right here and below the brake reservoir are going to be uh, metal tubing lines that run all the way to the back of the vehicle to the rear tires. So um, that's where I'll be running my wires through is all the way down the brake reservoir lines. Um, okay, let's go ahead and go to the back. We'll go ahead and start running the wires. Okay, so here's the wire that we ran from underneath the trunk area. Um, we did identify that the battery is on the driver's side, so I want to try and stay on the driver's side all the way down the frame as much as possible. We want to stay away from hot parts like the exhaust or moving parts like the uh, any axles. Um, anything that's moving that can pinch the wires, we want to stay away from. So get right to it. Okay, so my stopping point underneath the vehicle is going to be right at the firewall where I see the um, brake lines running down. Um, I've went down the inside of the gas tank here, right around the edge here. There's a, several uh, attachment points for accessories, so that's where I'll be uh, zip tying to as I clean it up. And uh, right over the, the axle back here as well, there's a nice... Um, cross member holding it up that I could go over the top of. And then we kind of ended up coming around and attaching to the, a wiring harness here. And we'll, we'll, well, before we're done, we'll go ahead and zip tie it all down. That way it doesn't fall down or move around on us. So now we're gonna go back to the engine compartment. We have our wiring ran to this wall. This is, this is the engine compartment wall, the firewall. Um, and it's ran down underneath. We need to get it pulled up and up to the battery area here. So to do that, I have uh, some stiff wire here. You can use a clothes hanger or any kind of wire, really. Um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna route it down the best way we can find possible that's gonna stay away from any moving parts or hot parts. And when we push it down, it'll go down to the ground here. And uh, I'm gonna use a light for some assistance here. I'm just speeding it down the brake lines here. The brake lines go right to about where I was routed underneath. Okay, and I think that'll do it there. Okay, back underneath the vehicle near the firewall engine compartment. This is where we pulled, pushed our wire down through. You can see it came out near, almost nearly perfect. So I'm gonna put the wire we ran and the wire we fished down together and we're gonna tape it up. I'll go back up to the top of the engine compartment and just pull straight up and it'll go right where we need it to next to the battery. Okay, you can see I got the two together. Now we'll just go back up to the top and pull. This is why we fished and attached it down underneath and I'm just pulling up. And there it is. I'll just keep pulling until we've got all of our slack pulled up. And now what I'm gonna do is just kind of cut it to fit here. all 
this extra wire. Okay, so we've cut it to fit. Um, our next step is to attach the provided feasible link to the battery post. You can see it comes in a loop here, so what we'll have to do is cut it. I'll cut it right down the center. That'll allow us to attach one end to the positive side of the battery, the other end to our wire that we ran. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with here on the battery post. Looks like we have two attachment points, one here and one here. We only need one, so I'm gonna use the, this top attachment post and sized it out to a 12 millimeter. So 12 millimeter socket. Okay, now to get this attached to that accessory post there, the manufacturer also provides us with an eyelet. This will attach to here, but first we'll need to expose some copper here. Take our crimper strippers and strip the coating away. Run it through the eyelet there. to make sure it's tight. Now we're ready to attach it to the positive post. And we'll snug it back down. Okay. We'll just make it look nice and neat over here and run it over to the wire that we ran. There's the two ends. We'll connect the two with butt connectors. First, we're going to need to expose the copper here. Okay, one end of the butt connector. And crimp. Make sure it's nice and tight. Take the other end of the connector, push it through. Last thing to do is power it up with the fuse. The manufacturer gives us a 10 amp fuse for this connector. I'll just put that in. And now our tow harness is powered. We can go ahead and test it and make sure that it's operating properly. Put our cap back on. Okay, we're at the back of the vehicle here where we've set our four flat tow harness connector. You can see it's got a ground post. We also have uh, three um, posts here, one for the left turn, right turn, and running lights and brakes. I'm gonna go ahead and take a, just a basic test light and uh, test to make sure that we do have power coming through. Take my ground clip and put it on the exhaust tip there. Got the running lights on and the emergency flashers. See that we have power there. The left turn and the right turn. Okay. It also comes with a neat little dust cover. So put that on. And when you're ready to tow, you got a couple different options. Um, you can leave the wiring in the back of the vehicle. Um, that, that'll keep from any corrosion getting inside the plug or anything. It's perfectly okay. When you're ready to use it, you'll just pull it out. Um, there is a door seal around the door that the, door, the, the wiring will sit, sit in as the door closes on it. So I'll go ahead and show that to you real quick. I just went ahead and slammed the door on the wiring. I'll open it back up. And you can see that there is no damage to the wire, no pinching or smashing or anything like that. Perfectly okay to leave it inside the vehicle and pull it out when you're ready to tow. Um, I will also show you how to run it underneath the vehicle and attach it to the wiring bracket here. Um, we'll do that after we're done cleaning up. So I'll put this back here. I'm going to shut the door. Um, now that we know everything's working, we'll go ahead and clean it all up and zip tie it to the, uh, to the body and to wire harnesses and stuff like that. So, okay, let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, 
now that I've got all the zip ties set here, I'm going to go ahead and cut some of the excess wire off from the zip tie itself. Okay. And now I'll go ahead and go underneath and zip tie under there. And don't, don't be shy with the zip ties. Use as many as possible. The more the better. Okay, so for those who want their four flat terminal underneath the vehicle, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to wire that underneath the vehicle. Okay, so here's our four flat. Um, basically, we're just gonna take this center piece off again. Perfect. We're gonna go ahead and remove the carpet plugs again. Pull the carpet up. You can see this is where we ran our power wire to the flood plug. We're going to go through that same flood plug. I'm just going to pull, pry it out. Then I'm going to take my cutters. I'm just going to make a small cut in the side of the flood plug here. Okay. We'll take our four flat and we're going to push it through the hole. Okay, we got the head of the plug through. I'm just going to put the harness right into that. And we're going to push it all back down together. Okay, now we can put it all back together and go underneath the vehicle and mount it to the four flat bracket. Okay, let's get back underneath the vehicle and mount it. Okay, so we're back underneath the vehicle. We've got our four flat underneath. Real simple to do. Um, we need a place to mount this. A lot of times you'll see four tow harnesses going down the road, hanging down like this, or just wrapped around several times around their hitch. That, that, that doesn't look very good. It, it looks awful. So please spend a couple of dollars to get a four flat bracket. Um, it makes the job look really professional. It's going to go right here. I'm going to take a couple of screws. I'm going to take a 3 8 wrench. I'm just going to snug these up a little bit to be super tight but just snug. We'll take our four flat, push it through the opening in the bracket, and it is set. Now we can go ahead and take our dust cover, put it over. Okay, and then the excess wire, we're gonna go ahead and take a few zip ties and just zip tie it up. Okay, and that does it for our uh, tow harness for a Toyota RAV4. Thank you for watching our video. Have fun and be safe. To learn more about the product seen in this video or to schedule an installation by U-Haul Hitch Professional, visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com.